Do you ever sit down to do some work, set up your favorite playlist, and open your Pomodoro timer, ready to attack the task at hand? But then you get stuck in and quickly begin to get distracted. You just can't focus on what you want to do, with your mind jumping to what you did yesterday and that thing coming up in a few weeks time. All of this nonsense, it just gets in the way of what you want to do. Why can't I just focus when I need to? Well, the problem, my friends, began the night before. When you were scrolling mindlessly into the earlier hours of the morning. At this point, you're in the numb state of Instagram or TikTok or YouTube until you eventually realize, shit, it's 1 a.m. I need to sleep. And you lie there in the darkness, tossing and turning and tossing and turning and tossing and turning. And this is the reason that when you woke up in the morning, you couldn't be productive. It was your low quality sleep. This is Dr. Matthew Walker. He's basically the god of sleep science. And if you follow his main tips of getting good sleep, then like all successful people, you will get an edge in life and massively increase your productivity. So get your notepad out ready. I'm gonna teach you how to harness the most powerful productivity hack known to man. Two pieces of advice for you. The first is regularity. Go to bed at the same time, wake up at the same time, no matter whether it's the weekday or the weekend. Wait, so you're telling me I've got to go up at 7 a.m. on a Saturday? That's horrific. Yep, you heard that right. You're gonna have to get up at the same time every day, even on weekends. You see, there's a biological mechanism in your body called the circadian rhythm. And basically what it does is regulate your energy levels throughout a 24 hour cycle. And therefore it regulates when you feel sleepy and when you feel awake. And if your sleep is irregular, you completely scuff this cycle. And this might explain why you feel unfocused and drained of energy during the day, but then feel super awake in the night when you're trying to sleep. Ah, oh, that makes sense. So it's like having a 24 hour clock inside your own body. Yes, exactly. Hold on, I know what you're going to ask. What about the party I want to go to? Or that sleepover when I won't get to sleep until very, 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 very late? And yes, those life things will occur and it's not doable to get up super early when you've had an event like that. But me personally, I aim to get up at the same time 95 days out of 100. That's kind of my rule, which means the vast majority of the time I feel great and there's that little 5% where I break the rules for special occasions. You might want to follow a similar framework if you want to have consistent energy levels throughout the day, because I'll be honest, it does massively impact your quality of life. The second is keep it cool. Your body needs to drop its core temperature by about two to three degrees Fahrenheit to initiate sleep and then to stay asleep. That's why I almost always have my windows open and almost never have my radiator on. Don't get me wrong, you don't want to be putting ice cubes on your pillow or anything like that. It's small things like turning the heating down, sleeping naked, Mate, that had a massive impact for me when I started doing that, honestly. You can also take a hot bath or a hot shower to help with this cooling effect when you go to sleep. Hold on a second, I've caught you out here. You said we need to be colder to sleep. And now you're suggesting we have warm showers and warm baths. Surely that's counterintuitive. <sighs> A hot bath or a hot shower warms your body up and therefore starts the cooling process. So then when you get into bed to go to sleep, you're already beginning to cool down. Now don't question me, you're literally a mug. Hi man, sorry, whoa, just chill out. I'll make my room colder. Can we move on? I think we should. What's next, Mr. Walker? Is darkness. We are a dark deprived society in this modern era and we need darkness at night to trigger the release of this hormone mm -hmm. called melatonin. Now, I'm not just gonna tell you the classic thing of, ooh, don't look at any screens before you go to bed. Because everyone and their nan knows that, right? I'm gonna give you more actionable, more valuable advice. Basically, you don't want to be exposed to bright light before you go to bed because it inhibits the release of a hormone called melatonin, which regulates your sleep. So what you're gonna do is set up a night routine for the last hour of your day before you turn the light out. And this night routine involves zero screens. And then what you do is you repeat this night routine day in, 
day out. Mine is literally as simple as 40-ish minutes of reading and then 20-ish minutes of journaling and reflection. If you stick to your night routine, you will have more melatonin and therefore sleep better. And a quick extra tip is that early morning sunlight is absolutely excellent for a multitude of health benefits, but specifically your sleep-wake cycle. So if you get early morning sun and avoid bright light in the evening, you will be set up to fall asleep much faster, which is an issue I know you and I both struggle with. Yeah, so um, alcohol and caffeine. So everyone knows that caffeine is an alerting substance. Um, it's in a class of drugs that we call the psychoactive stimulants. Right, Dr. Walker, as much as I love you, mate, I'm going to take over because you go into lots of waffly, waffly, waffly science here that I can summarize much easier for the people. Number one, don't drink coffee before bed. It's just silly. Caffeine, the stimulant within coffee, has a half-life of around eight hours. This means that if you drink a cup of coffee just before midday, then when you go to bed in the evening, you're going to have between a half and a quarter of the amount of caffeine still inside of your brain. And caffeine inhibits the neurological processes involved in sleep. Number two, don't drink too much alcohol before bed. It's not a good play. But Joel, I get the caffeine thing, but when I find I have a few alcoholic beverages, I do sleep better. Ah, you innocent boy. Basically, alcohol sedates you. It doesn't actually help you sleep. In fact, alcohol in your system inhibits your ability to enter the deeper stages of sleep later in the night because your liver has to process all the toxins and chemicals that it doesn't want in your body from that alcoholic beverage. Look, have a couple of bevs from time to time, that's okay, but don't think that it's gonna help you sleep. Actually, the science says the opposite, I'm sorry. Reality is that it ain't good for you and you're better off abstaining from alcohol apart from special occasions. Your brain and your body and your energy levels will thank you. And lastly, don't smoke. I know that Snoop Dogg is a legend, right? But doesn't he always look sleep deprived? Like, honestly, look at him. Partake in the devil's lettuce from time to time. It'll help you relax, be creative, all of those nice things, right? But don't make it a habit because it will inhibit your sleep. So in this context, and only this context, I'm gonna reject Snoop Dogg's advice. I genuinely feel like the reason I'm pretty happy and pretty productive the majority of the time is because of my high quality sleep. You are now equipped with the tools to have fantastic sleep quality yourself. So the next time you sit down to do some work, put your favorite playlist on, set your Pomodoro timer and feel ready to attack the task, you will remain focused and do the work required to progress towards your goals. Wait, what am I saying again? Oh, thank you for watching uh, the video. Um, we hope you enjoyed. You can watch this one to continue learning interesting things. Um, he told me that he'll see you over there and that you shouldn't forget to be an anomaly. High five camera. Oh wait, that's an action. Joel Clifton, yeah. Please sub and comment and like.